Well, good morning again. My name is Michael Anthony Peruca, and I am the Republican candidate for Anne Arundel County Council District 5 here in Maryland. Over the past two weeks, a controversy has continued to grow over my connection to a Christian free market group called the League of the South that has been unfairly labeled as a quote-unquote hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, there have been calls for me to publicly repudiate the League of the South, first by Democrats and then by a handful of Republicans, most notably gubernatorial candidate Larry Hogan. I'm here this morning to do three things. First, to restate my belief both as a Christian and as a conservative, that racism, in all its forms, is unacceptable and morally wrong. Secondly, to explain why I will not be playing along with the Democrat, the Democrat's cynical game. And finally, I'm going to talk about the real issues that Maryland voters care about, and the actual reason why I've been targeted, which is my principled opposition to bigger government and higher taxes. To begin with, a little background. In August of 2012, a man named Floyd Corkins walked into the offices of the Family Research Council in Washington, D.C. Now, he came armed that morning, intending to kill as many people as he possibly could. His pockets were filled with ammunition and 15 Chick-fil-A sandwiches which he planned to smash into the victim's faces. Mr. Corkins decided to target the Family Research Council after visiting the website of a well-funded left-wing group called the Southern Poverty Law Center. You see, he had consulted their map of hate groups, quote-unquote hate groups. Now, providentially, this act of anti-Christian hate was stopped by a security guard but it points out the dangers of the Southern Poverty Law Center, which has labeled about a thousand groups across the country as quote-unquote hate groups, smearing together obvious hatred, such as neo-Nazis or the Klan, with groups where the SPLC just simply doesn't like their politics. Groups like the Family Research Council and the League of the South. Now, despite the fact that the Southern Poverty Law Center almost enabled an anti-Christian massacre, they are somehow still given credence by left-of-center groups and by news organizations. For example, just before the primary election, the Baltimore Sun ran an article attempting to smear me as a racist based on the quote-unquote hate group label designation that the SBLC gave to the League of the South. That's right. Despite my clear record and public statements against racism, this old familiar scenario began to emerge. Let's smear the conservative Republican candidate as a racist. By this time, everyone is very familiar with how the race card game gets played in modern American politics. But before I address why I'm not going to be playing along with that cynical game, let me restate something that's obvious to everyone who actually knows me. Not only am I not a racist, but I am an anti-racist. I have spoken publicly against racism. I've gone out of my way to repudiate racism. And if there are any racists in the League of the South, I repudiate them and I pray for them. Now let's make it clear that I don't reject racism despite being a Christian conservative. I do so precisely because I am a Christian conservative. I reject racism because I am a Christian. And I believe that God made one race, the human race. Men and women of all skin colors are my brothers and my sisters. And I reject racism because I am a conservative who believes in individual rights bestowed on us by a loving God. Now, of course, the burden of proof should not be on me to prove that I'm not a racist. My political opponents are attempting to smear me with guilt by association, not, by the way, 
with a single solitary racist quote or action on my part. But to that end, two friends of mine have stepped forward to provide character references, both of which have been Republican candidates here in Maryland. And I'm going to let them, just for a moment, <coughs> introduce themselves and make brief statements to you, and then I shall return. To keep it brief, my name is Eric Knowles. I was the uh, former con uh, congressional candidate and the former senatorial candidate here in the state. Um, I've known Michael Peruca for probably four or five years now, and I can say that I've seen no such, uh, anything that, that would prove that he would be any sort of racist whatsoever. He's been nothing but welcoming with open arms to everyone I've seen of any sort of background, race, creed, color whatsoever. All people have always been welcome into the Institute of Constitution and his uh, first Fridays. So. Um, if it's out there, I've never seen it, and uh, I have nothing but full faith and trust in him uh, to be fair and balanced to every single person out there, regardless of your colors. Good morning, my name is Robert Broadus, and I have known Michael for several years, and I would echo Eric's remarks, uh, nothing uh, that even resembles racism. He's had me over to his home, He's uh, fed me, he's, uh, 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 we've prayed together. Um, I've enjoyed attending his uh, first Friday events at the Institute on the Constitution. Uh, I've spoken at those events. I've also spoken at uh, League of the South events because this group, um, along with the Institute on the Constitution, stood with us when it came to defending marriage as a union between a man and a woman. And this was a very serious fight waged here in Maryland. And when other people in the Republican Party were turning their backs on marriage, were turning their backs on conservative values, uh, Michael stood with us. Michael stood by his God, and that I appreciate. Um, as you know, Michael ran for president under the, under the Constitution Party banner, and has since distanced himself from the uh, Constitution Party because they turned their back on the issue of life being sacred. In contrast, when Larry Hogan, our current Republican nominee, was asked about the Hobby Lobby decision, which also says that a private business doesn't have to provide four kinds of abortifacients to their employees, well, Larry Hogan said, I have no comment on that. Anthony Brown was happy to wade into that issue. We need people of faith and courage and conviction in office in Maryland. We need people like Michael Peruca. And as I said before, and I will reiterate again, uh, I have seen nothing in all the years I've known him to suggest that he is in any way a racist, that he is in any way uh, opposed to people like me. Um, I've, attended, uh, I've attended church with him where there are several black members attending as well. And, you know, what racist would expose himself to this kind of, uh, uh, of dealings with people whom he, according to the accusations, wouldn't agree with? But what really, really influenced me just to come out today and say this is a ridiculous charge against him is when we were coming into the approach of whom we would support for the gubernatorial race. I was talking with Michael and others at the IOTC about who we should support for governor. And as you know, we had Larry Hogan, David Craig, Ron George, and Charles Lawler. Charles Lawler being African American. And at the time, I was not supporting <coughs> Charles Lawler. But Michael supported Charles Lawler. And his support of Charles Lawler encouraged me and the people I was associated with to endorse Charles Lawler and Tim Kimmerman for governor. Unfortunately, they did not win. We wish we had that kind of courage and conviction representing us in Annapolis. Thank you. Thank you both gentlemen. I'm very, very grateful. Now let me explain why I am not going to play along with the cynical political charade. We've all seen the race card game played so many times in American politics that the normal sequence of events is completely predictable. Democrats, and it's always Democrats, make the unwarranted charge of racism against Republicans, and it's always Republicans, 
Then the Republicans fall all over themselves in a misguided attempt to appease the Democrat demands. However, this never actually works. You see, feeding the race card monster does nothing to slow down its insatiable appetite for destruction. And I'm here this morning to say that I understand the nature of the cynical, dishonest race card smear game, and I'm not going to play along. In this case, the charges against me are being led by Carl Snowden in what I believe is an obvious attempt to distract from the personal demons that have plagued Mr. Snowden over the past few years. Once a respected Maryland state official, now Mr. Snowden has three drunk driving convictions and a drug conviction and has been reduced to heading up a civil rights group that he created himself. Now I understand why Mr. Snowden desperately needs to find issues to attach himself to. And as a Christian, I pray for his recovery from his personal issues. However, while I'm sympathetic to his problems, I'm not about to let him smear me in order to find renewed relevance. Even beyond my specific case, however, this one-sided race card game just has to stop. Playing the race card solves no real problems, it makes nobody's life better, and to state the painfully obvious, it's a horribly one-sided game. You see, Democrats have no problem cozying up to Planned Parenthood, an organization that was founded by avowed racist Margaret Sanger. Sanger created something called the Negro Project to abort as many black babies as possible. And with the help, with the help of black community leaders. To this day, Planned Parenthood kills a significantly larger proportion of black babies than it does white babies. So where are the calls for Democrats to distance themselves from this group that many believe is committing black genocide? Nowhere. And as Barack Obama's ally Al Sharpton proves, Democrats are allowed to be as destructively racist as they want to be. They can start race riots or defend young men who brutally rape a black woman and they are re rewarded with their own MSNBC show. That's long as they remain loyal to the Democrat Party and to Barack Obama. Yet despite this obvious double standard, Republicans continue to fall for the Democrat race card game, allowing the shameless racist Democrats to divide and to conquer. Now Republican gubernatorial candidate Larry Hogan has never met me. He's never spoken to me. He never took the time to even ask me if I was racist or to reach out or to have a dialogue with me. And again, as a Christian, I'm ready and willing to forgive Mr. Hogan and would like to sit down with him. But Mr. Hogan should understand that the Democrats making these accusations are not his friend. They want to see him defeated in November, just as they want to see all Republicans defeated. And Republican leadership here in Maryland has rightly said that this race card sideshow is a distraction from the real issues. But they make a mistake, however, in attempting to kowtow to liberals and Democrats that created that distraction. What's really happening is that the Democrats are desperate to win the fifth district seat that I'm running for, just as they see their grip slipping statewide. Their opposition to me is ideological. I'm a Christian conservative who won't raise taxes or increase the size of government. And that's the real issue in the election. And that's exactly why the Democrats oppose me. I believe that Maryland is ready to change direction. Across the state, citizens see the failure of Democrat policies. And I believe it's time for a new direction in political tactics as well. People are sick to death of this dishonest politics of personal destruction. The race card game has been played so often and so recklessly that it's allowing real racism to spread. And I say, enough with the foolishness. There are real issues in this election. And I want every voter in Anne Arundel County to District 5 to know that I am a fighter who will do my part to keep taxes low and to keep government out of your lives. I'm counting on you to see past the distractions. And I'm counting on your vote 
in November. And I thank you for your kind attention today. Does anybody have any questions? I'll start. Um, you look at the League of... Uh, can uh, Rob, you oh, are? Uh, Robert sorry. Lang, WBAL Radio. Okay. The League of the morning. South... Good morning. Um, if you look at the League of the South website, one of the first things you see is they talk about secession. They want the southern states to secede. Do you believe the southern states, or any state for that matter, should secede? And the second part about that is when... We all know what happened the last time the southern states seceded. And you can understand why a lot of people would be upset with that. Let me let you comment on that. Well, first, of first of all, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Um, as you rightly say, that website speaks for itself mm -hmm. and makes the cases it makes. I don't necessarily feel compelled, and I, and I won't com uh, comment on the website because you can go there and see what it says. I'm more concerned, you know, secession is a historical fact, and it's a political reality. It's happened many times in history. As a matter of fact, if you all, Robert, if you, uh, if you celebrated the 4th of July earlier mm -hmm. this month, yeah. if you ate a hot dog or went to a picnic or uh, watched fireworks, you were actually celebrating an act of secession. When in the course of human events Point it becomes taken. necessary, yeah. the very first sentence of our declaration is, speaks to secession. So it's a political fact reality. What I'm more concerned about in the Anne Arundel County District 5 race is that we actually have a secession going on, Robert. People are leaving. People are leaving Maryland. That is an act, if you will, of personal secession. People are walking, people are, I talked to a lady who, who I remember uh, she was in a military family, mm -hmm. and as soon as their tour was up, I, I, I must have asked her a question like, well, will you be staying? And, and her... She just shrugged her shoulders and resigned to the fact, well, how can I? Why would we? That's the kind of actual secession that I'm worried about and that we need to focus on in Anne Arundel County. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you say who you're sure. with? Dwayne Keenan with Red Maryland. Hi. First of all, Carl Snow is not going to vote for you. Um, but there's a lot of conservatives, Republican, pro-life conservatives in your district, who agree with you about creation, are thrilled that you gave something to the Creation Museum, are thrilled that you're standing up for the Constitution, we see it being abused by political people in the federal, state, local level, mm -hmm. are thrilled that you're standing up for that. But they have a problem with this whole legal the South thing, the secession, and the perceived racism, whether it's real or not. Isn't it better to push that off the books and just disavow, resign from that, get it off the table so that the Democrats can't use it against you, let alone Republicans. Well, I've made some remarks here which I think directly address that. Um, no, I don't. that would not be the way I would do it because I believe that that is playing into the cynical political charade. And uh, as I said, it doesn't really work. Feeding the race card monster doesn't reduce his appetite. You don't see it as a distraction to the race? I, th I think it is a distraction, but it's it's... The distraction is the political, cynical game, and that's what I'm pointing out to you. Is there any other questions? Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. And where are you from? Lima Ramen. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I understand that last week your campaign made a statement that your uh, association with the League of the South has nothing to do with your race in District 5 and doesn't affect uh, District 5 voters. My understanding is that your campaign sent out a global call that among one of the questions was whether or not people had heard of the League of the South and whether or not that would affect their vote. If that is indeed something your campaign uh, did put out, uh, could you comment on that? Uh, you know why I can't comment on that because I, I just have to plead ignorance. I don't know about that particular. Uh, I, I can't I can't say whether that happened or didn't happen because I personally don't know. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. May, may I direct a question at Mr. Bonner? May, uh, you had mentioned that you had spoken at a League of the <coughs> South event. Yes. Can you enlighten us to which event that was? Certainly. Uh, in 2012, um, mm -hmm. we had the uh, marriage referendum, and uh, and I spoke in Federalsburg uh, to encourage League of the South members to come out to vote uh, against redefining marriage. Uh, 
got warm support of that. Um, was this a specific League of the South event? Yes. It was? Okay. Yes. And who was, who was holding the event? League of the South. Do you remember the person who was in charge of the event? Um, the, the management has changed. Um, and so I don't remember the exact uh, names, but I'm sure that if you go to the website, you can, uh, Maryland League of the South, uh, okay. there's a name here. Anybody else? Hi. Hi. And your name, Mr. please? Maryland Reporter. Good morning, Mr. Good Chris. morning, Glenn. Uh, I, I didn't feel you answered the question. Do you actually believe that states should secede? Uh, that's, the, you know, that reminds me of a question that, uh, uh, kind of an old joke they asked attorneys. If you ask the attorney in the room what should what should his position be, he will say it depends. Um, and uh, secession is a historical fact, and it, and it has happened. And uh, I don't it, it, wars happen, secessions happen. They're political events. Um, I actually am running. I'm actually doing something that would be anti-secession now, I would think, because I'm running for a seat in a government, and so I'm, I'm asking people, I'm, I'm asking people to, to place trust in me so that I can work within that government to prevent the individual secession that's occurring now. Whether or not that individual secession will form into a political movement, I'm not a part of that. I'm actually going in the other direction. Excuse me. And your oath, you'll support the Constitution? Uh, yes, sir. If I take an oath to support the Constitution or the Charter, the Anne Arundel County Charter, I will uphold it. Yes, sir. What is your name? Jonathan Hudson, Huffington Post. There's a video of you in 2012 speaking to the National Conference of the League of the South in which you spoke favorably about secession. At the end of your remarks, you asked the crowd to please stand for the national anthem, and then you led them in a chorus of, I wish I was in Dixie. Do you believe that your remarks and your calling Dixie the national anthem was a mistake? And if so, why? Uh, no, I don't think it was a mistake. And um, interestingly, Jonathan, you mentioned you talked about that video. That video, I have seen copies of that video uh, circulated, and it's actually been altered. Uh, Mr. Throckmorton actually altered the video to, I think, uh, gain his own, uh, for, to gain his, to, to, Further his own conclusion about what Well, the I'm same saying. remarks are available on the YouTube channel of the League of the South that are identical to the remarks that Warren Throckmorton posted on his blog, Patheos. Well, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you. There is a difference, and Mr. Throckmorton changed that video so he could reach his own political opinion. Well, then what about the version that appears on the League of the South, which is identical on their YouTube channel? What about it? Well, do you re believe that your remarks, calling Dixie the national anthem and speaking favorably about secession, were a mistake? And if so, why? Again, secession, I repeat what I said before, secession is a political reality. There are, there are, uh, there are times in history when it has occurred. Uh, people sometimes say, uh, well, we settled that. We, you know, that was settled. Well, and I would suggest to you that no moral issue uh, is really ever settled by the point of a sword or the point of a gun, uh, barrel of a gun. Um, these issues... These issues are, remain and are debated by people. And again, I want to come back. We talk about secession. I think the most significant thing we should be concerned about is that people want to leave Maryland because the taxes are too high and there's out-of-control spending. And the local government is not responsive to the people. There's a frustration out there when I go and knock on doors and talk to people. There's a frustration and, uh, uh, um, and, a, and a real, true concern. I don't want that to come to a secession point. I want, I want the people of Maryland to want to stay in Maryland and have representative government. One more question. No further questions? Okay. Thank can you, guys. Get, can we get the spelling of the names of the two gentlemen? Sure. Yeah. God bless you, folks. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for your kind attention today.